In the last video, we came up with a way to generate individual clock pulses from a single button. But as it turned out, the button on its own doesn't really create a clean clock signal. So we ended up adding this debouncing circuitry here, which makes sure we only get a single clock pulse per button push. Next up, I'd like to look at adding a clock that runs on its own without me having to constantly push a button. It should also have an adjustable speed so we can slow the processor down for debugging and observing what it's doing, but we can also crank the speed up to have it blast through a program very quickly. The 555 timer we used for the debouncing business in the last video is also pretty great for generating such a tunable clock. Let's take another look at that chip. To do button debouncing, we used the 555's pin 2 and 6, which connect to the comparators. They make the output go high if their voltage drops below one third of VDD, and they make it go low if the voltage rises above two thirds of VDD. And in between one third and two thirds of VDD, the output will just remain as it is. Now, instead of having a button charge or discharge the capacitor, we can directly charge or discharge the capacitor through the output. Let's step through this to see what's going on. When the capacitor voltage drops below one third, the output goes high, and charges the capacitor through the resistor. And as soon as the voltage reaches two thirds of VDD, the output goes low and discharges the capacitor through the resistor. And as a result, we'd expect the capacitor to swing between one thirds and two thirds of VDD, with the output being a neat square wave. Let's quickly do the math. Charging the capacitor from one thirds to two thirds of VDD and then discharging it to one third again takes roughly 1.4 times the resistance times the capacitance. If we pick a 100 kilo ohm resistor and a 220 nanofarad capacitor, for example, that would give us a clock period of 30 milliseconds, which is a frequency of 32 hertz. To make this adjustable, we can replace the fixed resistor with a variable one. One weird case with this setup is that we can turn the variable resistor all the way down to zero ohms, which is basically a short circuit. Mathematically, that would be a clock period of zero seconds and a frequency approaching infinity. But in practice, Parasitic resistance and capacitance in the breadboard will produce some high but pretty random maximum frequency here. We can make this a bit more controlled by introducing an additional resistor in series with the variable one, which will be the minimum resistance that remains when we dial the variable one all the way down to zero. If we put that fixed resistor at say one kilo ohm, our maximum frequency is going to be around three kilohertz. By choosing the size of the variable resistor, we can then pick the minimum frequency for the clock. With a one mega ohm variable resistor, for example, our minimum frequency is going to be around three hertz. This sounds like a pretty nice range of frequencies to get going with for our CPU. So let's build it up on the breadboard. First, we'll want another 555 timer, and I'm pretty sure this isn't going to be the last one in this build. Also, hook up power and ground for that and connect the reset pin we're not using to VDD. Then we need a capacitor we're going to charge and discharge. Again, we'll want to connect both pin two and six to that capacitor, so both comparators look at the same voltage. Then we'll want to connect the fixed and variable resistors in series between the output pin three and the comparator pins two and six. And we should be all set. Let's add another LED so we can observe what's going on. All right, let's power it up and see this thing in action. And there we go. I've turned the resistor to its maximum setting and we're getting roughly those three ticks per second we were expecting. Let's hook up the oscilloscope and see how this changes as we adjust that resistor. Each vertical line on the oscilloscope corresponds to 100 milliseconds and we're seeing around three lines between rising edges. So that's around 300 milliseconds of clock period or three hertz. Now let me slowly turn that resistor down towards zero ohms. That nicely increases the frequency all the way up to around three kilohertz we were expecting. Let me bring that four bit counter circuit that we've built over to this new clock so we can give it a spin at a higher frequency. That is counting up by around three per second. And we can adjust the resistor to increase the speed of the count. And all the way at the maximum setting, we can't really observe any individual numbers anymore because we're going through thousands of them per second. So this was a pretty straightforward way of generating an adjustable clock signal. We've added another 555 timer, but this time in its A-stable mode, where it keeps on toggling back and forth. We also picked the values of the capacitor and the resistors to get a nice frequency range between about 3 Hz on the low end and around 3-ish kilohertz at the upper end. 
In the next video, I'd like to spend some time to come up with a way for me to switch between the clocks we have. Ideally, we'd be able to push one button to go into single stepping mode and another button to have the free running clock take over. Thanks a lot for watching, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this and see you next time.